Hello and welcome to my channel. This portrait of a dog was done mostly in colored pencil, but I also used a little bit of pastel for the background. As for the paper, that was primed with clear gesso, but I'm going to do that later during the drawing process. So let me show you how it was done. I'm going to start with a little bit of burnt ochre here at the tip of these ears. The dog's fur is mostly very, very light, almost white. Uh, with a few yellowish details here and there. So I picked a, a light grey toned paper because I thought that it would be a nice background color and I thought that I would be able to make the lighter areas pop out and use the grey as the back tone, as the uh, base tone rather. But eventually as you will see I decided that some parts of the background needed to be a little bit darker so I decided to increase the contrast by doing a little bit of shading on the background. I'll get to that. As you can see I started off with a light sketch in place uh, that was done uh, with a bit of chalk and now I'm going over that uh, with a couple of different colored pencils. Now this first part of the drawing process is going to be a little bit quicker because I want to um, lay down some of the basic tones, base tones, that I'm going to work on top of once I apply the clear gesso. Now as for the background, I realize that I want to use a little bit of blue and I want to make the background a little bit darker in some places. And I thought that this would be a little bit easier with a pastel pencil rather than rather than a colored pencil because that way there would be less texture and the background would appear smoother. So I used one of the Master's Touch woodless charcoal, uh, woodless uh, pastel pencils that I have and uh, this one is a uh, light ultramarine but I also needed to make it just a little bit darker in some places to enhance the contrast between the main subject and the background so I added a touch of black colored pen pastel pencil and then I blended that in nicely and I didn't really want to cover all of the background because I want to create a portrait vignette with these edges fading a little bit and I don't want to draw all the way to the edge of the paper. I like vignettes when I draw portraits. If you've been uh, watching my videos you probably know that's usually the case. So that's what I'm gonna do here even though I have a little bit of a background. The only reason for that background is to increase the contrast between uh, the background and the main subject and to make the main subject feel more three-dimensional and to make it pop out of the paper a little bit more. So like, uh, like I said, I used a bit of the uh, light ultramarine um, pastel pencil for the background and after that, once the background was smooth and uh, once the tone was to my liking, I decided to switch to colored pencils and to start working on the main subject. The colored pencils I'm using are Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils and the paper I'm using is a uh, Fibriano grey toned paper. Uh, the size of the drawing is going to be around 10 times 14 inches, so about 14 inches in height. And uh, I started off by blocking in some parts of the fur, some of the lighter parts of the fur, then some of the darker parts of the fur, and then some of these yellowish and pinkish parts uh, uh, around the ears, or rather on the inner part of the ear, and to make some parts of it a little bit darker, I added a little bit of that magenta and some reddish brown and some other tones. So I was just sort of playing around with colors because I need to have at least a little bit of variation in, in color uh, because obviously even though the dog's fur is kind of um, well very light almost white I don't want it to look too dull so I wanted to introduce some other tones 
Uh, but I picked up one of the lighter greys to shade some parts of the head, uh, just to make some indication of the topography of the head by indicating where the shadow areas are. That's going to make the appearance of the head a little bit more three-dimensional. And once I have those larger shadow areas in place, it's going to be easier for me to focus on the details. So as you can see, I already, here, once I did a little bit of blending with a brush, I already indicated where some of the shadow areas are, and now you can start to feel that there are certain shapes there. After that, I picked up one of the black colored pencils, and I decided to do a little bit of work on the eyes. The eyes are relatively simple, with a small catch light here at the top, which I decided to put in first, and then to work around it with a black colored pencil. Um, the reference photo I had, which I'm going to put in the, in the description, if you want to check it out, it wasn't very high quality, but in my opinion it was good enough for me to, to do this portrait. It was a commissioned portrait, and I uh, decided to create a vignette out of it to focus on the head and the neck and like I said to fade the edges but also to add a little bit of background because I thought that this bluish color would make for a nice contrast with some of these uh, other tones that we can see on the on the ears and on the on the nose and it will also create a little bit of depth so that the subject would pop out now I'm doing a bit of more shade, shading on the nose, on the uh, on the nose area and the tongue. Just adding some colors on that tongue to get that pinkish look, and some very very crude shading on the tongue and the uh, and the nose. So this is uh, even though it feels like I'm putting in some details, this is for me the. Uh, initial stage still, where I don't really care too much about the exact appearance of the details. I am laying down a little bit of texture here and there. I am reserving some space for some of the details, but the, the real work on the details will come once I apply the clear gesso. Now, if many of, in many of my previous videos, I used clear gesso uh, as a primer before I started doing any work. So I would first apply clear gesso to create that sanded surface and then I would do all of the work here as in one of my previous videos where I did that drawing of a red cardinal or a red bird. I first did most of the work with a colored pencil and then I applied the clear gesso. So I'm going to do something similar here. I'm going to do a little bit of work, or a lot of work, first uh, with my colored pencils and a little bit with those pastel pencils, which I've already done. And then I'm going to apply clear gesso on top of that. It's not going to smudge much, or, and I'm going to be careful so that it doesn't smudge. And then I'm going to refine the details later once that whole thing has dried off. And what the clear gesso will allow me to do, it will allow me to layer and to add lighter details on top of the darker areas. And it will also allow me to create brighter colors, stronger colors. This is the gesso I'm going to use, the Liquitex Clear Gesso. So like I said, it's an acrylic primer. And I'm just going to apply it uh, with a flat, soft, synthetic brush by putting a little bit at the time. Uh, don't worry, this is not going to smudge much. I'm going to be very careful because I'm going to be applying it lightly and I'm going to be uh, working on small amounts at the time. And even if there is a little bit of smudging and I go over the edges here and there, it's really not a big deal because I'm going to have plenty of tooth uh, so that I can fix that later. But the main reason why it doesn't smudge is because I'm applying this on regular paper where there isn't much residue. Uh, if I were uh, use, if I were working on a paper that 
already had some kind of a primer or a sanded paper, there would be a lot more residue flying around because uh, that rough uh, surface grinds on the pencil and creates a lot more residue. But here most of the pigment just sticks to the paper and uh, in the case of pastel you just blow off the rest. So there is re really isn't anything to smudge when you think about it. That's why uh, it's not a problem. Now I know that uh, now it looks like you're looking at it through a, a steamy glass or something but it will be transparent once it dries. When it dries, it dries completely clear. And uh, sometimes you can even apply a thicker layer and it doesn't really matter. It will be quite transparent w once it's dry, but you have to leave it for at least several hours. So after I'm done with that, I'm going to make a break and continue tomorrow. So here, as you can see, it's dry and we have a nice tooth to work with. And all of the layers that I put down are still here. There wasn't much smudging, but now the most interesting and the most uh, fun part of the drying process starts because now we are able to put in the details uh, now that we have this wonderful tooth created by the clear gesso. I'm just going to make some parts of the ear a little bit darker and another thing that you'll notice with clear gesso is something I already mentioned the colors with, will get uh, brighter and stronger on this surface uh, because the rough surface really grinds on the pencil and allows the pigment to stick and uh, the brighter colors, the lighter colors, will appear even lighter and the darker colors uh, will appear even darker or more, more saturated. So now, as I'm working on this inner part of the ear, you can see how easy it is for me to layer these lighter marks and to imitate the appearance of the fur because you can see that some of these lighter longer hairs are obscuring that opening of the ear and to make that look more natural it's better to work from dark to light but you can't always do that on regular paper on a paper pr primed with clear gesso or some other kind of sanded paper you can do that easily and another thing that you're noticing is how uh, much more these brighter marks stand out now against the background uh, now the, uh, there is a little bit more tooth in order to imitate a similar effect on a conventional paper, you could pick a paper that has more tooth and that would probably produce uh, decent results in comparison to some of the smoother papers, but uh, it would, you would never be able to achieve uh, what you're able to achieve here with a sanded paper or with a paper prime with clear gesso, which is basically the same thing. So you can see that even when I'm working on some of these darker areas, like for example the eye and the area around the eye, that darker skin around the eye, um, all of these values are getting even darker as I'm working on this surface, which is very good because it increases the range of value, uh, making the subject pop out even more, making everything look more three-dimensional and more lively in the process. So I'm just going to keep working uh, with a combination of these uh, lighter pencils to refine the appearance of the fur as well as the shape of the face. So you can see that some parts of the dog's face are a little bit more protruded like that eyebrow area. So I made that a little bit lighter because it's facing up, it's facing towards the light source. And that upper part above the eye is going to appear lighter. Also, um, that part around the cheeks, which is sticking out around the cheekbone, also needs to be a little bit lighter. Then it go goes down and in a little bit, which is why I made it a bit darker. So, uh, by using these relationships between areas of uh, lighter and darker value, I'm able to explain to the viewer what the shape of the dog's face really is. Uh, and... Uh, I'm starting to make it look a lot more, a lot closer to the reference. And of course, another thing that I'm doing is refining the appearance of that fur so that it looks more like actual natural looking fur. 
here I did a little bit more shading on the tongue making this uh, bottom portion which is sticking out more a little bit lighter and this uh, upper portion which is closer to the mouth a little bit darker because it's in the shadow I added a couple more of these pinkish and purplish tones and a few highlights because it is um, a wet reflective uh, surface so I used a, even a little bit of white colored pencil here and there uh, just uh, modifying the appearance of the fur, this short fur around the nose and now I'm going to do a little bit of work on the nose softening some of these values and trying to make these nostrils stand out a little bit more adding a tiny highlight to the nose itself as you can see so that everything looks more three-dimensional and so that the nose feels like it's protruding toward, toward us uh, so I'm um, just uh, really taking advantage of that tooth and even though you can uh, put the primer first and then work on top of that there are advantages to doing most of the work or most of the blocking in first and then refining the details uh, once the primer is in place because um, that way there is less smudging and there is less mess uh, because uh, the, this rough surface creates a lot of residue so if uh, you were to block it in uh, first of all you would lose a little bit of that tooth and it would be a little bit more difficult to layer with those fine details and second if you try to uh, reapply uh, the primer or put some more of that clear gesso there would be quite a bit more smudging uh, than there was in this case so once again for those who are unfamiliar with my materials I am using colored pencils on a surface primed with clear gesso. Clear gesso creates a sanded surface similar to sandpaper. If you don't want to use this you can use artist quality papers if you have the money for them or if you can find them uh, like UART or pastel mat those will work wonderfully well but this works uh, almost as well and uh, it's a lot cheaper. Clear gesso uh, is a primer for painting and for drawing as you can see it creates a sanded surface for pastels for colored pencils you can find that online you can order it or you can make one yourself because uh, the, re the recipes can, uh, can be found on YouTube and it's really not that complicated you can actually buy just a couple of ingredients and make your own clear gesso and, uh, and create a surface that will work really well uh, with uh, colored pencils not just the higher quality colored pencils like I'm using now but with any type of colored pencils uh, moving on to the right side of the face just refining that one in the similar manner that I did uh, with the left one and uh, finishing the eye and the area around the eye, the eye socket and this eyebrow area. So like I said, this was a commissioned portrait um, of a customer who lost their dog. They, they had this pet for almost two decades and they wanted a portrait of her. And I hope that it turned out nice. Like I said, I uh, added a little bit of more contrast, a little bit more value to the background and I hope that it was a good choice. Um, you let me know what you think in the comments uh, of course give me a like and subscribe and don't forget to check out my other videos. <clears throat> now if you want to see longer videos like full-length narrated footage and if you want to observe the drawing process in real time and see a lot more content then you should really head over to my Patreon because you'll find lots of stuff there uh, but here on YouTube you can also see lots of drawings of animals if you want to see that sort of stuff. Anyway, the drawing as you can see is now done. I'm pretty happy with the way the fur looks now. I just put my signature in the lower right corner and that's it. Uh, the drawing is now done. I hope you like it. And once again, if you want to see more content, longer videos, check out my Patreon. Thank you for watching this one. I'm going to see you in the next video and bye for now.